us bugging. Good morning, all you bug lovers out there and VW lovers. Uh, we're back on the 74 Super Beetle. This is G-Man, just bugging. I'm painting the jugs right now, waiting for them to dry. I got them all painted up and uh, I figured I'd get over here while I'm waiting on Kyle to come in. Kyle's gonna cut this rear apron off and then we'll deal with the trimmings, which is full of filler. Yeah, I got to looking at it more and you can see the drill holes right here where they had pulled this out. So, and we got a lot of the paint stripped off on the inside of the compartment. So we're gonna get busy with this and I'm under here. I'm gonna do that messed up axle bearing. I already ended up breaking all these as you can see there and they don't come out that easy. There we go. Don't want to forget our spacer. And there's a big one in there when you get that bearing out of the way. All right, time for some driving out the bearings. I don't know if you can see that, but get a snap ring in here. There you go. Wow, first time. So don't forget to take that out because you won't be able to drive the bearing out. Right, let's move it. Oh yeah. Where does she go? Way over there. All right, we got the inner out. And then you'll see there's a big nasty greasy spacer in the middle. You don't want to forget that. And then you want to clean all that grease out of there. GAA is what I recall calling it. That's what we called it in the army. Always had a generic name. I'm gonna drive out the outer bearing. All right, I got my bearing all packed here and I don't have a socket big enough to tap the outer edges of it, but I think it's gonna go in just fine tapping it like this. It looks like it's already going and it's been, it was spinning in there, so it's gonna be fine. See, there we go. It's all the way in. The spacer back in there. But I want to pack a bunch of grease in there first. That'll work. I'm going to put your retainer ring on there. I need my seal. Alright. I'll get something to knock that in there with. Get to knock your seal out of here. Alright, I'm back. It's been a busy morning. Haven't been over to film every bit. But uh, Kyle came in and, and cut the apron off. And as you can see, this is the original body piece. And they raised it up with another, the apron that they put on here. And look at this. Look how far it's off. And then they actually built this up with Bondo. And notice the holes are way down here. And I'm wondering how in the world bolted it there. And then I went back and looked at the fender. And it's got washers welded to the edge of it. So they could reach the holes. So yeah, I got my hands full on this one. And I did finish the, the bearing in here. And I put brand new shoes and wheel cylinder in there. See my nice little bleeder valve. Had a hell of a time getting this line off, but I managed. So that's what we got there. Well, hey guys, we were going to assemble this motor and when we pulled all our rags, we stuck in all the orifices. We pulled them out and then we turned the motor sideways to put the push rod tubes in it. And damn, if some oil didn't come out of it all over my paint. And this was wiping it off, started to remove. I just painted it this morning. So uh, we're gonna plug it up and strip all this off of it and do it again. So. We can't have that. So we had some uh, other things to do. The new exhaust has a rust inhibitor on it. And uh, this will just instantly burn off when you crank the motor up. And it recommends in the instructions. A lot of people don't think about it. They think it's all pretty and black. So we're gonna put some paint stripper on it and get all that off of it and paint these with some high temp, low gloss paint. And it looked good for a while. All right, guys, I'm gonna get back on the, I've already done the bearing replacement over here. Wheel cylinder, axle bearings, wheel bearings, whatever you wanna call them. Placed all the brake pads and everything. Freed up the, both adjusters in there, they were seized. We're still waiting on the rear apron for this. I don't wanna go any further than that until it's in here so I can not take off what, more than I have to. I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing. Replace the wheel bearings and the wheel cylinder and the brake shoes and these, uh, 
adjusters are frozen also. I still need to do the front brakes. I may not get to it today. All right, well, it's a little drizzly out here today. I don't want to ruin my brand new camera, as you notice. Uh, the audio probably got better. The picture got better. Um, we're getting a microphone, external microphone today, so I won't hear all that wind anymore, or you shouldn't. All right, guys, I just got over here to start on this, and I don't know if you can see that. The camera's pointed at it. Not good. Got a broke off bolt in the CV axle. And um, this looks like this one's broken too. Of course, it, it's broken here. Got one snapped off there. So uh, I got some extraction to do. I have some more of these bolts. Uh, at least I can uh, take these off. That one shouldn't be a big deal. I got some more of these bolts and I'll, uh, when I slide this off of there, that stud will still be on there. This piece will be stuck in the axle. I'll, I'll be removing that anyways, put it in the vise and uh, take care of that and replace the bolts. That shouldn't be a, too big of a deal. That one right there, just put the vice grips on it once those CV axles off of it. Alrighty, well, just want to point that out so the owner can see that. All right, guys, I got the CV axle off and I got this off. And apparently the other one doesn't look like it messed up the uh, threads. It just backed out or it snapped off on one or the other. I didn't actually pay much attention to that one. Here's the one that was broke off. Then there was another one that was loose. Here it is, it's broke off too but I only see one in there that I need to extract. So, so you had a completely failed bearing on that side. And then you had a CV joint that was about to come apart or disconnected. So it wouldn't have been a wheel off, but it damn sure would have been an axle tearing the shit out of everything else on this side of the car in the rear. So not a good thing. Good thing that we got it because uh, everything will be all right after this. Well, I'll get this a little further apart, drive out the bearings, then I'll go to extracting this broke off bolt. All right, guys, as you can see, I've got my bearing, the inner and outer out. I cleaned up most of the grease out of it. I got my surfaces cleaned. Still gotta track the bolt out of this. Same story on the other side, but not as you know much movement as the other side, but it was going out. I mean, ratio just falls out of it. So this could have been, it wouldn't have been a wheel off, but your axle could have tore everything up or probably cracked the casing on the transmission you know you're hauling ass down the road and all of a sudden it releases dunka, dunka, dunka. so you know we do have a three-wheeler in the house the uh, 1975 trike but i don't think this would be a fun ride on a, with three wheels let me get on with this i'm going to uh probably drive my races in or either do this first but all right i got my new bearing in there all packed with grease i put some grease all in between put the spacer in there i'm gonna put my snap ring c-clamp with i mean snap ring in there i've got my new bearing here all packed with grease and uh i'm gonna replace the seal and then i'll extract the, the uh broken off bolt in there all right and then next i'll take the pads off place the wheel cylinder free these up lubricate them real nice put it all back together and i'll be done with this uh, hopefully i don't have a hell of a time getting this line off the back of that wheel cylinder but oh well then it'll be front brakes and hopefully the motor gets all done today or by tomorrow morning all right guys i see there's a broken off bolt on the axle i don't know if y'all have ever used one of these like a center punch it's like an automatic one it ding ding you know spring loaded ding ding you like that it, it's great for extracting bolts especially if they you know they're not too bad you know somebody bottomed it out and it snapped but you can take this and keep doing that i don't know if you can see that it's turning kind of close to the center so it, having a hard time turning it put us a little bit of clean in there go get my pb blaster it's moving then you just keep finding a spot that you can dig into but you get the gist of it it works try that if, if you haven't already this kyle over there putting the uh push rod tubes together the adjustables how you doing there cal <laughs> these are some pretty ass tins man uh we're gonna assemble this motor and as you can see we kind of mocked up the uh deck lid i still get a, some measurements and everything but we'll get on with this you've already seen the assembly in other videos so we'll uh, periodically show you where where we're at all right guys we're getting the push rod tubes in there kyle's got it going on here i'm over here finishing up on the rear brake get the bearings in there now about to close it up and replace the shoes. All right, guys, we had to pull it off the stand. 
so we can get the rear main replaced and then put the clutch back on it because our clutch was good and um, then we'll put it back up on the stand so we'll be ready to crank it up when we get to that point all right she's coming together nicely look at that red baby Ooh, yeah all right almost i got a few pent tens that were missing one right here two three underneath just still waiting on them to come in so uh, i've got to clean the carburetor and not much left to do now exhaust surprisingly went on well last one i did you know make a few adjustments in it but i'm pretty pleased with this one the uh, carburetor is quite a mess see all that black carbon up in there about to start dipping it um and as you can see back here i've got a little bit more of it back together get this carburetor on there and then uh, put some new points in there and set them on the distributor so uh coming together i want to be able to start this up this weekend all right guys i got the carburetor all rebuilt yeah it was dirty inside so i'm putting on the fuel line i'm gonna put on the fuel filter and then I've got to put points and rotor and cap on the distributor, get that on there, get some spark plug wires on it, and fill her up with oil, and should be it. Uh, it won't be long to get it cranked up. I'm almost done with this bad boy. Look at that. That's pretty. Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I'm done with the distributor, putting new points in it, condenser, cap, rotor, plugs. Um, now I'm going to get ready to put the pushrod tubes in and get ready for a valve adjustment. And then I'm going to set it top dead center and uh, get, get my firing order all set in there also and fill her up with some oil. I'm going to start it on the engine stand and run it and tune it and everything. And then I'm going to drop the oil out of it. I want to flush everything that was in it out of it and then fill it again so that's what my game plan is she's looking good all right guys this is it the rear end damage for the 74 super beetle the one with the checkerboard deck lid since you know i have so many 74s around um as you can see it doesn't look half bad at all you know i had to improvise to make things work but uh I got it to where it looks it looks like it should of course the fenders are kind of shaped for this already somebody just butchered them up but this car they're going to bring it back later they want to enjoy it with the motor and said go ahead and take care of the rear end damage later he's going to want the whole car this matte black finish with that black cherry engine tins in there and then probably somewhere in the car will integrate that same black cherry back into it like in the interior and and so forth so they want to go out and take it out to the beach and enjoy it and bring it back and then leave it here for quite a while so this is why we're doing it in stages so to speak so um you know now it's just gonna install the two seals in here and the one for the bell housing and the engine and then 10 it's a cooling seal so all right and i got my hinges up there painted and uh since i wasn't painting the deck lid it had you know there was red and white and yellow all on these cars some so many multiple coats of paint on it but that lip looked really awful on the deck lid so i masked it off wired it all off and uh, painted it matte black so that when i'm shut when i shut it i don't see that awful lip in there so just a little extra mile i mean like i said it's being done in phases so We'll see this one again. As you can see, I got the fenders and the deck lid on it. It's all, uh, got the insulation in here. I'm gonna, I left this, I haven't glued it yet. This one, um, I wanna cut my holes in there for the wiring for the lights to go out, but it looks nice. Got my seals in here. I had to move the deck lid a little bit downward. I'm gonna root adjust a little bit more but that's what i had to do because of the rear end collision it kind of changed a lot of things and i had to work with what i had you know they're going to bring it back to paint the whole thing so today i'm going to do the front brakes and replace the wheel cylinders and then i'm going to bleed the whole system out and adjust all the brakes front and back so it'll be completing the entire brake job so and uh, get the motor started on the engine stand today, tune it up and everything, make sure there's no problems with it, and get ready to slap it back up into the car. Then I'm gonna hook the lights back up in the fenders and uh, I should be able to get this thing out of here, hopefully sooner than Sunday. I don't see why not. All right, we got it all set up on here. I'm gonna crank it up, see if I can get the timing right, tune it out and everything, or tune it up, should I say. See what we got here. I noticed that these really stiff, hard, like plastic valve cover gaskets 
they just don't seal properly it's i've got a leak on this side and so i'm going to switch them to the cork ones i'm going to make a note not to have anybody buy those kits anymore that come with the big hard it's like a hard plastic valve cover gasket and now i've got to tune the carburetor but i'm not going to do that until i take those out of the valve covers and put new ones in there with some rtv on the valve cover and wait for it to dry so i'm going to get back to this tomorrow but it's runs fine and everything i just still have to tune it in and set the timing but uh, that should do it uh we'll be once i get done with this tomorrow morning uh we'll put this back up into the car and get on with it all right the g-man with just bugging out hey guys it's dalton thanks for watching the video i hope you guys enjoyed the video if so leave a like down below leave a comment and have a just bugging over day